Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. I'm going to put this picture up because you can crop it or screenshot it and use it to paint along with me. All right, now here's where we're going. This is the end of the painting. Um, what I'm demonstrating here is a simplified dog. At the end of the painting, your palette should look somewhat like this. All those individual colors have stayed individual. I did not wipe my palette at any point um, during the process. Um, there is the no tanizer that I used to get information. There's the final dog picture. Again, simplified, looking for basic forms. And, um, and I'll bring the photograph over in a second. There we go. Okay. So I wanted to show you at the beginning that that's where we're going to end up. And I'll show it, ag it again at the end. All right, so let's talk about how we get there. Um, or linger. We could linger for a minute. <laughs> that's a little too long. <laughs> All right. So the point is, what I'm showing you here are all the tools that I need in order to get the job done. The palette, which is uh, two paints that are um, squeezed out into the pans. I have um, 140 press weight arches paper. Uh, I have the photograph of the collie that I'm going to paint. And I also have the no tanizer going, uh, which is on the iPad. So, all right. Now, here's the first step. I put in my darkest darks first. I use, I'm using three colors to do this. This is my usual triad for starting on dark uh, value shapes. It is ultramarine blue, alizarin and crimson, and um, burnt sienna. I'm using all three of those colors. That's all I have on my palette right now are these three colors. I'm using a number 10 flat brush, and this is four times as fast as I normally paint. I'm only looking for the darkest darks here. All right, I want to get those in. Now I'm going to move into mid-tones. Most of the collie is a mid-toned thing. So now I've started to make some other piles on my palette. I've gone into mixing some cadmium red with some Naples yellow, which gives me a lovely pink for the tongue, the inside of the ears, and a couple of cast shadows. All right, now things are going to start to get pretty serious because what I have left is a lot of a lot of dog. <laughs> There's still a lot of dog to go, um, but it is a mid-tone dog, and I'm not going to use one color to do it. I have to use a variety of colors to do it because, of course, the coat is a variety of colors. So I have an orange, um, I have a yellow, I have um, a like a burnt sienna sort of color, and I've also mixed up some neutrals. There's um, my first neutrals made an appearance, that nice soft gray. All these midtones are the exact same value. I've tested them on a card, so I know that I can plug them into any place that's mid-toned, and the value will be correct. So that's what I'm doing now. I've mixed the colors, mixed the colors on the palette, made all those piles, so I've mixed for color, and now I'm massing for value. I'm putting in those mid-tones anywhere that I see them. And if I can see what is, um, what is locally colored white, but it's in shadow, then I'll use that um, neutral gray, which becomes almost like a glue between the colors. I like to have some neutrals going, because if everything is color, then in a sense nothing is color. And there were some cast shadows on the collie's face and those warm grays and warm browns that I mix. I don't ever, I never take my neutrals from um, a tube. I mix them from colors I've already um, used in the painting by mixing complements. So if I have a red, I'll mix it with a little bit of green. If I have a blue, I'll mix it with a little bit of orange. There's a lot of mixing with blue and orange that's happening in order to make this painting happen, in order for those grays and those browns to appear. All right, now it's time to get to make some what I call final adjustments. I need to make some of my darks that I began with even darker. The eyes and a couple of places on the collie, um, the sides of the face were quite dark, where his fur is dark. I need that because I want to have a wide range of values, as wide as I can have them be, from darkest dark to lightest lights. Now, my lightest light is going to be a white, 
and that's going to be the white of the paper. So I did not put any masking fluid on. I just was disciplined in terms of not putting um, color anywhere that white appeared on the collie. Except, of course, you know, I did, except where it was in shadow, then I had to deal with it because white in shadow, even if it's a local color, is still going to be darker than white in the light. And now I'm masking for value, mixing for color. I've got a lot of colors that I can put into that background. Um, and those are all colors that I've consistently used in the collie so far. And so they'll integrate really nicely. So I masked for value. I mixed up all those different colors and I placed them in. I don't rub. If you've noticed, I never rub. Because if I rub, then those colors are going to start to mix together and they'll neutralize. And I'll just end up with a brown looking dog on a um, very dark green uh, piece of paper. It's, 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 it's about um, mixing the right colors, but also letting the colors mix on the paper themselves and not to rub, not to um, you place them, but let them do the work, let them join together. And then they'll remain pure and, and not neutralize each other. So there's the, pretty much the end of the painting, what I wanted to have, which was um, simple shapes, there's the palette at the end. If you look down at your palette and it's all gray or it's all brown, then you've neutralized color and you've, um, you've lost your way in terms of value. Uh, there's the no tanizer that I use on my iPad. And, um, and here's gonna, the picture's gonna come. So I hope that's helpful. And again, you can download the picture from the beginning of this video and paint right along with me. Um, and that's my little tip or lesson for the day. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white and your paints wet. Mask for value, mix for color. And please join me at joemckenzie.com and join my YouTube channel. And I will see you next time. And if you want to learn how to paint this way along with me, um, I will book lessons with you. And we do it, um, we can do it on Facebook Messenger. Works really well. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.